On the menu today, 3D printing. That's right. Researchers at Columbia University School of Engineering have created a seven ingredient cheesecake. Yes, using a 3D printer. Here's how this works. Researchers converted the ingredients into peanut butter banana cheesecake into paste-like substances, right? Um, they're then loaded onto a 3D printer, which prints them out, as you see in front of you, in the shape of a cake. Joining us now is Jonathan Bludinger. He's a mechanical engineer and postdoctoral fellow at Columbia University's School of Engineering. Jonathan, welcome. Also you brought amateur some. chef. And an amateur <laughs> chef we're about to experience. So as we jump in and taste test, we have some of this right in front of us. Um, I want you to react in real time with us as we taste what this really uh, feels like. Okay. Tell us what the advantages are of doing something like this. I'm going to try. Yeah, I want to so, try it. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. going to try it with Go, a spoon. Go for it, Lilia. It's this all soft. This is a first for me, too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you haven't tasted it? That tastes real. That tastes really good. So, so the graham cracker, it's soft, mm -hmm. but it tastes like graham. Wow. Wait um, a minute. This you get really to the middle, good. you get some Nutella and jam. Why are you doing this? Mm. <laughs> Tell us about so, why this is important. This so is what this is besides, you know, nice attractive cakes is <laughs> it's merging software with food. Mm -hmm. So as soon as software touches an industry, whether it be telecommunication, your doorbell, hailing a cab, it just totally wow. converts it and creates these new possibilities. So the possibilities are endless when it comes to things that contain certain ingredients. Tell us, I mean, First of all, I guess, what are the drawbacks of 3D printed food? This and could and go what wrong. haven't you achieved yet? Yes, yeah, so this is not faster. It's not more efficient. <laughs> it's not more cost effective right now. But um, it's nuanced. But it's nuanced. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> but it's really about making food in a different way. So, um, as opposed to normal methods where we're chopping foods and we're kind of limited by our hands, it's a very analog process cooking. Mm. But using a, using a robot to actually assemble your food using software allows you to do a lot in terms of nutrition control. So, if you like your cake sweet, you mm. might like it a little bit savory. You can dial in these different um, nutrients and these different macros in the food that you make, and it's all custom. Oh, so and, what and also if you're allergic to something, I would Exactly. Yeah. Dietary restrictions, yeah. it kind of runs the gamut. So what type of future, then, is this paving the way for, right? Should chefs and sous chefs out there be worried because they're looking at their replacement? Because i got to say, it tastes okay. It tastes yeah. okay. It if I go to this other restaurant, I'm sending it back. Maybe but, because I was starving. Look, <laughs> but what I'm saying, look, it's free, and Everyone's this is a for food a test. Critic, see? Everyone's I a food critic. Everyone. But I guess my question to you is, because there's a way to yeah. go here, yeah. what are we paving the way for? Yeah, I think that's a great question. That's one, I don't know if I know the answer to yet. I think, I think, um, for anything you have to remember, we're not Michelin chefs. We're engineers at the end of the day, so we're... I can taste that. We're trying to... <laughs> You heard it here first. Um, so no, I think it's something which we're iterating on, but um, I kind of see this going in a lot of different directions. I think restaurants, foodies are going to be able to use it. Um, I don't think this is going to replace chefs by any means. Mm. I'm not saying sous chefs and you know all the people out there are going to have to be worried about their jobs just yet. But is yet. it more efficient for something like you know like mass food production for something that I don't know like a companies that make chocolate bars or or is, is it more efficient than the current methods? It's all about customization and uber accessibility. Mm. So I see this more as eventually ending up in your homes one day, like a microwave mm. or a kitchen appliance, where to come back from the gym, you have your smartwatch, which is capturing all your calories, like everything, all these data trackers are tracking your health, but it's yeah. not actionable. So this allows it to be actionable. Great. So That's my Apple great. Watch, not only is it, which is something that I've always been curious about, is like, how do you enter the calorie count without doing it directly? Well, if it's yeah. connected to your home food printer, then it can actually... You can actually complete the loop. Yeah. There's, I mean, right now, it's all these apps are doing great because you can gamify it. You say, oh, I yeah. got this score. I can compare it with my friends. Mm -hmm. But... What are you actually doing with that information? You yeah. know? I so mean, it's, it's measuring what you work out, but not what you take in. Exactly. This is like having a nutritionist and a personal chef all in one. It learns from your habits. Once you start to add in the AI element, you can actually learn. It can learn from your habits and actually start to recommend meals for you. Wow! So there's that so could... much we haven't even touched on. The savory potential. still seems like it's endless. Yeah, and savory foods is that a possibility? Savory as well. Okay, um, typically, we find that more people are more. Um, uh, desserts are more forgiving because they tend to be a little bit more perfect in nature. Mm, yeah. But we have done savory foods as well, like chicken, you know, vegetables, other things like that. Vegetables. Yeah. You just kind of reshape it. But. You just you reshape it, but really, as long as you can turn it into a paste or some kind of liquid. Um, I know it doesn't sound appetizing with vegetables, no, not but at all. I think it'll, it'll get to the point. <laughs> hey, we will drink smoothies, right? It's a similar thing. Exactly. Maybe. maybe it'll it'll get to the point. Foods. I think where it'll get better.
Well, this tastes delicious, regardless of what Errol says. <laughs> hey, keep working on it. I support your Bring endeavor. Back and this I'll, is very I'll cool. for you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you Thanks both. Thanks for being here. Very good.